Great. So um, we have quorum. Actually, we have all of our members here. So thank you. Um, it the time is seven oh eight. This is a meeting of the Parks Committee on May fifth, twenty twenty one. I am Lisa Soto. I'm the new chair. So uh, bear with me as I learn to navigate this stuff. Um, working through it right now, and um, we can go ahead and uh, start the agenda. First, I just want to go ahead and read. I bought it on brought it up on the screen, but I want to go ahead and read the uh, conduct statement here. Um, <clears throat> just as a reminder that a community board meeting should be held in a professional and hostile free environment. The following guidelines are applicable to members of the public community board 11 and to community board 11 staff. Any personal attacks against a board member, staff member, member of the public or elected official or their representative or at any particular meeting will result in the individual being asked to leave the meeting and could result in the meeting's closure. Any inappropriate outbursts during the meeting may result in the individual being asked to leave. If outbursts or attacks continue, this may be considered disturbing the peace and the authorities may be summoned. Uh, if the meeting is held remotely, the person will be muted or expelled for the remainder of the meeting. All public speakers must address and face community board 11, community board 11 members with their concerns. Electioneering for a position other than an officer of community board is prohibited. So, with that business out of the way, scroll back to the top of the agenda. Uh, when I put this agenda together, I discovered that we somehow got a little bit behind in approving our minutes. So, we have to approve October, November, and January. Um, so if I can have, um, I guess we'll do, um, unless anybody has any objections, let's say, um, we approve all three at once. Um, so, uh, can I have a motion for, can I have a motion to, I'll put a motion forward to approve all three minutes, October, November of 2020 and January, 2021. Do I have a second? I second. Great. So we have Edith seconding. And um, do we have any objections or any actually discussion first? Any objections or abstentions? No objection. Great. No. So then um, all three sets of minutes are approved. Um, next up, we have um, New York Botanical Gardens uh, Bronx East Bronx Park East entrance ramp. It's an ADA ramp. Um, an angel from Angel Fernandez from the Bronx Botanical Gar New York Botanical Gardens um, said he would be here to address this to us. Angel, are you present today? I don't see him on here. I can't again. My screen is it's very weird how this works. I can't see everybody, but I don't see him on here. Um, so we'll move on. If he happens to join later, we can always uh, circle back to that. Um, next up, we have the Loretto Playground Dog Run Petition. Um, can I that, Lisa? Sure. Okay. At one of our board meetings, it was brought to our attention by somebody that the Parks Department will not do a dog run there because there is no funding, number one. And number two, mm -hmm. because they've already made plans for the park and they will not do it more than once every 10 years. Debbie, you can back me up on this statement. When we did our dog run, we did not go through the community board. Our association did it on our own with the help of our politicians. I would like to suggest to this person that wants petitions to do the same thing that we did, he'll get much further. Yes, so he did submit um, to us petitions um, I, there's a virtual petition that he did submit to us. Um, and I think he also has handwritten petitions. Um, and he wanted us to vote on a letter of support for it, but, however, but it was all given, the concern, given the concern that Debbie raised on email, I invited Matt from the parks department to further speak to it. If he, he was going to try to get information, but I wasn't sure. Um, he wasn't sure if he was going to be able to get it in time. 
Uh, so Matt, are you are you? Able I know to there. I know there's also. I know there's also great concern with the school in the area. So, I know there was also uh, a large objection to it being over in Loretto. There was. It was supposed to. It was supposed to try to figure out some other park area to have it, not Loretto. Got it. Got it. So, um, Matt, I know there's two Matts here, but Matt from the from the Parks Department, are you are you here? Are you able to speak to that? Yep, I'm, I'm here. I'm uh, on the screen. I come up on the ch in chat and the participant side as it just says user. I don't know. Oh. Why. I'm logged in. <laughs> I'm logged in with my uh, city email, so I don't know why I come up as user. But uh, do you know who you heard that from, Edith, on regarding? Presented to us at the community board. I don't remember who presented it. It wasn't me, though, was it? Because I don't remember saying it. Not you. Yeah. Was it a? Uh, sort of a stocky bald guy. I don't have the memory of who did it, uh, but they did it in person. I think so. Yes. No, this this was this was Zoom. It was on Zoom. All right, whatever you want to call this, I'm just calling it Zoom for short. But this is yeah, we're yeah. talking about when you got the information uh, from Parks Department about the dog room. I'm just curious as to who it came from. Because I'm pretty familiar with everybody within the agency that has access to and gives the community board information. Right. Um, generally, it comes from two sources, either the commissioner's office or through me. And right. it wasn't through me this time. So it came well, from the commissioner's office. Um, I don't know. Andrea Siegel reminded me that she had discussion about this and she refreshed my memory about this statement. Right. It does, it does sound familiar to me too, but I can't place where or when or who it came from. But it's all Mike Ortiz. Really Michael Ortiz. Was that him? Does that ring a bell? Matt, I have a chemo brain. I can't remember, but it was presented I, I, at the board meeting. <laughs> I can't remember what I had for lunch either. So I did. I had coffee and toast. See, you're already doing better <laughs> than me. <laughs> Um, All right. So, bottom line, answer any is, questions. Is, is, I guess the bottom line, Matt, it does is is that is that statement true? Regardless of who it may may have come from, does that statement sound true to you? Um, that you can't do it there. What are the? I'm sorry. That you can't do it there. Right. Either due to uh, budgetary constraints or due to the school issue, uh, the school concern that well, that Debbie well, raised. I think the budgetary constraints would probably be true for the current at this present time but with mm -hmm. anything as you guys know if you get funding through an elected official then that funding is going to go directed towards whatever they want to do so well, this, you might you might have budget constraints now but maybe not if you petition for it and you lobby for it and it gets funded through somebody then that's that's an obstacle that's easily overcome matt this is why I suggested they do the same thing our organization did. We went through our yeah. politics. Not That's through right. The community. That's exactly how you got it done, and you got it done fast because you go right to a, right to a city council or state senator or some some elected official who has the discretionary funds to allocate it towards something like this. Now they they have to they they have all these rules for their discretionary spending. And they they are coming up to the end of a fiscal year. They might have to get rid of it because once it's a new fiscal year, it's it's a reset button, and so they have to put it somewhere. So a dog run is a relatively inexpensive project. I think the dog run over there only cost what um, it was less than a million. I know that. Oh. And, and, and well, that's <laughs> <laughs> that's cheap for. I love for how us. that's cheap. That's yeah. amazing. <laughs> So the, you fact, get a cup. the fact remains it's being used, which I'm very happy to say. Yeah. So the other thing, just, just from a um, maintenance and operations perspective that I see, um, the bocce court area, as I know, that, that was where it was talked about. That's right. a small area. That's really just, that's not even 
close. I mean, I think that's like 10% of the size compared to what's over off of uh, Bronx Park East there. Uh, yeah, it, it's, it's only Chihuahua size. Yeah, it's really small. We had um, so I know that part of the that part of the park is not slated for any capital construction coming up. So I I don't have an answer. I wasn't able to get anything out of the commissioner's office uh, today, Lisa. I'm sorry, but uh, as soon as That's I okay. hear back, I I'll forward it off to you. I'll forward it over to you. And now that we're finished with that, can I speak to Mac, Lisa? Is it okay? Can you what? I'm sorry, I can't hear you. To discuss something else with Matt, also regarding with the parks and our committee. Um, sure. Yeah. Right. I've spoken to the commissioner. I had the board of health here regarding a tree issue on Holland Avenue. Are you familiar with that now? Yep, I know the one. And what happened? No one ever came to do their thing. Now we got more than three holes there. No one's answering me. Your the rat holes that you forwarded to me that were over there, those yeah. those were baited. That was where by the school. Yep. Now what about the one on Holland, right outside the building that the commissioner knew about? Because that's, all- that's the tree that is overgrowing the tree pit is a trip hazard. No, that that's an altogether different one. Okay. I'm talking. Hold on. I'll call you right back. I'm talking about the tree on Holland Avenue where Joe Franklin from the Board of Health came to inspect and he notified the commissioner. Somebody was supposed to come and put poison down the holes and put some kind of mesh over it and meet with me. Meanwhile, nothing's happening. Yeah. Um, I know that we can't do that. We don't, we can't put mesh over the holes and we can't put poison down in them. We are only allowed to to uh, bait with something else um, and we're allowed to put down dry ice into holes. Okay, that's, we can do the rest. As long as you do that, we can't touch it. We did that. I could get you the dates of the application. I was, uh, the holes are massive. Yeah. Unless we're talking about two different spots. I know the Why email not? that came across my desk. Maybe I didn't see that one, but if you, if, it put in the chat the two uh, the two no, locations. Talk tomorrow at your office. What's that? I'll talk to you tomorrow. Okay. You got my number? I do. Okay. Give me a call. Thank you. Thanks, Lee. I, I know I know at least one of the sites, if not two of the sites, supposedly were done. And they're done through our horticultural department, because they're the only division that has our exterminators we're really limited on rat baiting right now so we're not the, the premier agency for this because well, we 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 just we can't do it they the city doesn't let us do it according to the board of health he spoke to the commissioner and and she spoke to me and said we were going to do it i was going to meet with the person and never came to pass okay huh? we'll follow up then you and i could talk Okay, we'll talk tomorrow. Uh-huh. And Edith, didn't you also want to talk to Matt um, about barbecuing? I don't know what this oh, yes. issue was. Yes. I know that you're limited with people to go over to the parks. The commissioner told me when I spoke to her a couple of weeks ago. Um, I'm worried about the barbecuing this season, Matt, because people don't have the money to go anywhere. Yep. This is their way of having a family function out in the open. I'm afraid of a fire. Okay, that's fair. Our barbecuing is, I mean, we, we aren't increasing our PEP officers mm-hmm. that much more than they were last year, fortunately. And so uh, they're limited. They have illegal barbecuing that is done at probably about two to 300 locations throughout the borough of the Bronx. And we have uh, on shift, I'm gonna guess about 35 officers for all of those locations split between two shifts on each day of a, of a weekend. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't know 
how else to give you a perspective other than those numbers? Well, we have huge areas here. We have the Parkway and we have, you know, Bronx Park East. There's yep. places. And mm-hmm. now I find people are barbecuing on the sidewalks. Yep. They oh, do. Wow. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And my phone's been going off the hook with people barbecuing on the sidewalks. I don't know if they think I'm a grand marshal. I don't know. But I'm really afraid of somebody getting hurt. I am. The kids run a senior citizen's walk. Yep. And it's a hazard. There's, I mean, it, it's, it's enforced by us. It, we talk to people. Uh, we are not going out to get into uh, hard conflicts with our first contact with people when they're barbecuing. Uh, we, we get them to leave the park. Uh, then the officers have to move on. And then whether it's, it's me, my staff, other officers, we, can't sit there and you know just monitor the area so that they don't come back then they go on to the next park and people do come back it's it's yeah. it's an issue it's an issue it's that issue. has been that is and it will be and we do our best to try to curtail it to try to mitigate it as much as possible but i'll be honest and we're not going to eliminate it so oh, and look, I don't want anybody getting into any trouble. I don't want anybody getting into any fights because today you never know what the outcome of a fight is. Right. You know what I'm saying? And I appreciate everything that you and your staff do. Um, but we're gonna have to put heads together. But I thank you for outside of enforcement, to- I'm open to any suggestion. So uh-huh. well, I can give tickets if you give me a book. No. <laughs> we're not gonna do that. <laughs> Because, Uh-oh. yeah, <laughs> but you could, you could talk to people. I don't. I try, it. and I, I hate I to tell you the answer I get, Matt. I don't suggest it to anybody. I wouldn't do but it. I can't they stop tell it. Me, they tell me to mind my own effing business. Yeah, Matt, is there a way for us to call? Like, like, what do we do other than call? And maybe everybody else knows this, but I'm new, so I don't know. Um, like if we see someone barbecuing, as Edith said, on, on the sidewalk, for instance, like, do we just call 911 or is there a number to call for parks to get 1 of those PEP officers to, to address the issue? Oh, yeah. on the sidewalk, I've called 911. Yeah, that would be an NYPD issue because that's outside of parks jurisdiction. Got it. So if it's, let's say it's on like Pelham Parkway where there's not, uh, where barbecuing <laughs> isn't allowed. Would that still be a 911 issue or is there a park number to call? Uh, you could call 911 and just tell them what it is. I think the 911 operator will then uh, determine what level of priority that's going to be. It's going to be a low one. We generally get well, reports yeah. off of that. I've uh, I've called on, on Pelham Parkway when people are under the tree with a flame like three stories high and I'm like you're gonna burn down the tree. Yeah. <laughs> so I've called nine one one call nine one one on that. Any yeah. anything like that. If you see hot coals that are dumped by a tree, that's a fire hazard. Right. That's nine one one appropriate. Uh anything like that. Uh, if you just see people barbecuing, um go for it. I mean I'm I don't right. I just I hate don't. to I just hate to waste the resources of nine one one. It, uh, unless, like, you know, as Debbie described, it's like imminent, like there's going to be a fire <laughs> right. Uh, right away. Let me uh, look. There's probably a number. There's probably a number that I don't have right now that you could call uh-huh. our central PEP command, which is uh, the, the park police, and they will then dispatch somebody out to that location. So I'll get the I'll, number. I'll tell okay. you who I called. I've called our NCO officers and they come. Yeah, you can call them too. That's an option. That's an option. Um, Matt, some, one of the members from the public, um, put in the chat, uh, related to this topic. She wanted to know if PEP officers work in the evenings or just during nine to five. No, they do evenings. We're they coming up evenings. into the season. Well, they will be on duty till midnight. Okay. And that includes the weekend. We have, too, yeah, we have, we have two. Yeah, that includes definitely includes the weekends. Um, okay. we have two shifts that go basically from seven to 7 a.m. until midnight. We do not staff the, the graveyard shift. Got it. Okay. Um, do we have any other 
questions on from the committee on the barbecues. I did want to switch to. We will be putting a bunch more signs up on Pelham Parkway, so you oh, might see good. some. They're little. They're they're green and they just say no barbecuing. It's the only no barbecuing sign I can put up. So we don't are have the red in, ones. Are they in different languages as well? No, they just have a picture icon on it. It says no okay. barbecuing or open flames, and then a picture with a line through it. So okay. So you'll see some um, go up. They're not the okay. bright red ones that you could see. We don't. We don't have those anymore. We can't make them and we don't put them out. Our sign committee, which is a whole bunch of uh, brass from downtown, determined mm -hmm. all the signs we could put up in parks. So. Got it. Understood. Mm -hmm. Um, Moving on to another topic that was supposed to be on the agenda, but unfortunately was left off by accident, Um, is the, the park surveys that um, that we were working on. Um, Matt, if you remember, I think this was per your advice. Yeah. It was to kind uh, of go around and survey the parks and, and submit a report to you. Well, this is more for you. I think it was, okay. I don't, I really don't need a report. Um, I know the condition of the parks every day. I get a report every day. Right. Uh, from, from the current status of the parks. I guess just and, kind of more recommendations. So like it's sort of like what you guys, what do you guys want to, how do you want to funnel your, your energy and your expectations and work that you do through this committee? And one way to get started on that is just to go look at some of the parks within the community board and mm -hmm. then have different viewpoints on what about this or what about that or this park looks like it needs to be upgraded the most or here's the one that we're that we're hearing the most from from the community from within community board 11 so we might want to put our efforts towards that um so that's it's more of an educating and getting yourself familiar with all the properties within community board 11 and then you guys could if you have questions then i'm here to help you and direct you and that type of thing but what do you want to do? Um, the, the parks committee is for you guys. I'm the representative from the agency that is your outlet to ask questions, get stuff done, have a, have a, a voice which you could get right to instead of being put on hold, all that type of stuff. Right, so right, right. Okay, okay, this is Janice Walker. Um, I have a question for Matt. Uh, what's your number, first of all? 718-430-1885. I'll type it into the chat. Okay. Um, the last time I got a meeting with you, um, I was supposed to get some information regarding Zimmerman Playground, the park yeah. house. And um, I never got that. I needed to get the information as to how much it would cost to deal with that park house because there are no facilities for right. the children or the I, parents. I, I never can give you information. Yeah. Go ahead. We had we had a meeting out there during COVID. Um Go ahead. with the commissioners from downtown. Um, okay. And I think it's upwards of about twenty million dollars, I think. Mm hmm Uh if you contact and Lisa can and the commissioner's office would be able to get a better so number, but commissioner, mm -hmm. commissioner was yeah. at that meeting. I, I know. Okay. When, she, um, that Hello. she she Hello. also she has just twelve community boards that she tries to keep in contact. With I too, understand so. that, but this was last year during COVID or before COVID, and I just need those figures. I've gotten some estimates from some of the politicians. What However, were their estimates? A couple of them. I just need to know. I need to get a figure. And I had asked Let me, you could I ask year. you this for what purpose? Just so, to just for your knowledge? It, to, to reconstruct that park house. There are no facilities for the children or their parents. And at that meeting that the commissioner and you were at, they said the park house would have to be raised 
and reconstruct it. That's correct. So you said it's twenty million. That's a that's a ballpark figure. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Janice, I don't yes. know if you were at the, at the board meeting, but we did. Um, Parks did send us um, a request to send a letter of support for for federal funding for the mm -hmm. Zimmerman playground. Um, and so the amount um, for that was eight point five million. But I I don't believe it was specific to what you're speaking to to that um, to that house. But what, that's what it mm -hmm. was like the, the house. Um, it wasn't specific for that. It's just they're seeking 8.5 million. That's what they're going to ask for in the in the federal funding package. But you know, it's mm -hmm. going to kind of be whatever whatever they get. And I don't know what the time frame on that is. Um, Matt, I don't know if you know the time frame on that. The letter was submitted by the deadline, which was um, a couple of weeks ago. This stuff takes a couple of years for it to um, get funneled through and allocated to a specific purpose and then it will get locked in to that through the whatever grant whatever funding grant or whatever elected official designates his allocation for that purpose mm -hmm. and that'll stay there until you get enough money to do that now regardless of whatever you guys think the process still has to go through our capital uh, division and so they would be the ones to to be doing the plans, uh, procuring. Capital division. Mm -hmm. Yep. Is there a special it's, number? No, it's a okay. it's through your elected officials. Okay. The okay. only way to go there's no way for you guys to go through it except through your elected officials. That I know, but I'm you know I just need to. Mm -hmm. I never got a figure before. This is the first time we're getting. I'm getting a figure. So I yeah. appreciate that. Okay. So, uh, Diane Finch was. That... Sorry, go ahead, Matt. Diane Finch was talking about that. There's no bathroom in Zimmerman. She's a hundred percent right. We would love to open a bathroom. We we can't. We we are we are limited. We can't open we a bathroom have... in a place that was flooded. Okay, we've been. I've been going through this, having meetings with the parks department for years. Okay. At the meeting last year, the commissioner said. The whole place would have to be raised. It was flooded. There was there's uh, a, there's a bunch day. of issues with that. Yeah, I know that. I'm I'm well aware of that. However, I, the issues I want to deal with, and I I'm just getting a figure from you. Now, I've been meeting okay. with the park department for years, for years. Okay. And I'm just getting a figure from you tonight. Okay. Now I'll go to my elected officials and figure out, you know, who can do what. But, you know, I'm just getting a figure. You couldn't, eat the, you know, the people at that meeting last year couldn't even give me a figure. And I never, no one ever got back to me, which is in poor taste. Okay, I'm done. All right. Thanks, Janice. Matt, th this actually reminds. I think I think I'm starting to remember now what this whole that was the purpose of the park survey that we project that we started. Um, you, you yeah, started we were going to go to the dip. The well, we really just started it in the fall, but we were going to go what? to the different. Guess we were going to survey. We surveyed Zimmerman Playground over five years ago. Okay. And, you know, you well, started. You started. However, we've been dealing with this for years. And at that time we started and we had a meeting. What happened was they said it's not usable at all. So, you know, you're going to come back and survey again to say, we know we can't use the um, Zimmerman Park House. We have to get the funding to raise it and redo it. Period. Right. So that so that's what I'm saying. I, I remember, I don't know if it was Matt or somebody else from parks said that. I don't think do Matt was there. Yeah, so we should mm -hmm. once we do the surveys and we identify, okay, this this park needs a restroom, this park needs new basketball hoops, wh whatever it is, whatever the issues are that we identify, we submit that in the survey, and then they'll give us it, then they'll give us the estimates, and then we could take those numbers and take it to our elected officials to see if we can get funding based mm -hmm. on kind of what our what we decide our priorities are. Does that mm -hmm. sound familiar? 
Yeah, I remember the conversation. Okay. Yeah, but this is this this was like five years ago. Okay, right, we did the right. surveys and all of that. And all of that. The surveys. Well, I and they apologize said we cannot for... use Zimmerman. We can't we can't even use the park house. It's closed. If you know, someone comes, if the PAL is there. I mean the re we can't you can't use the park house. PAL right. can't come in. All of that. You know, that's ridiculous. There were hundreds of kids in this area. Hundreds. There's 741 apartments in the coops. You have Parkside. The children come here to the playground. And Parkside has hundreds of um, thousands of apartments. You know, I think this needs to be dealt with as soon as possible. I mean, you keep doing the surveys, all of that, but you got to do a little bit more than the survey. Okay, so we'll work on um, the elected Is officials that and see what they can do. Who's that? Is that the living? official cost, Matt, or can you get back to us with like, um, uh, because I, I don't know if that was just a number you were thinking of or if you have a more. No, that's an unofficial. That's unofficial. That's, unofficial. that's ball, ballpark when I was last talking with the, uh, the capital projects manager for the Bronx. Uh, okay. And he would just, we deal with these projects all the time. We know what it costs when we look at something. Uh, so when you look at something, you have a rough estimate. You could say, yeah, this one's probably going to cost mm -hmm. this much. We don't know the exact until we get an estimate from our capital division at the request of the borough commissioner. She could do that for you. Okay. Um, I will. I will. I will send an email off. Okay. And. I think I have your email, Lisa. I'll copy you on it, and then you could see capital estimate for Zimmerman. Park uh, Zimmerman House. Park House rebuild, right? Correct. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Matt. No problem. Thank you. Lisa, Lisa? Yes. And I just want to, I just, I don't know if you were aware, I was trying to message you before. Um, Matt C has had his up, his hand up for a while. So I just want to draw attention that Matt C would like to speak. Okay, just one second. I just want to finish out this, um, this topic here. Um, regarding the the surveys so matt when you have an opportunity can you send me and i know you've sent this before but i just don't have it um because i wasn't chair so i didn't keep it um can you send the list of all of our parks properties um so that we have it and then at our next meeting we can kind of go through them and see if we want to if we want to continue on this individual survey i know we did three in the fall um or if you members already know that there's members of our committee um, or even the public already can identify some issues. We can start kind of gathering it all together and then um, prioritize what we want to focus on. Yeah, no problem. I'll get you that list. Great. Um, commit, uh, committee members, does anyone have anything else for Matt before we go into the party session? No. Great. So um, now we'll go into gallery session. Um, the other Matt, <laughs> uh, you have uh, the floor to address your concern. Hey, sorry, I don't want to cut in front of anybody that might have officially registered for the gallery, but um, I, my wife here, Chun, and I were uh, responsible for kind of uh, kickstarting the petition for the dog run, um, and we were just hearing a lot of things that. Um, we were curious about like uh, schools not being having concerns because uh, we reached out to Xavier as well as Al D'Angelo um, and didn't hear any concerns. And um, and the other one, uh, it being small, there are many small dog parks that are heavily used in the park in in New York City, um, in more crowded neighborhoods than than Morris Park. And um, I'm just uh, I'm just struggling to I'm new to this. Uh, community engagement thing, and um, 
I was told to go do a petition by the community board. And in the meantime, I have been reaching out to the public officials who are very supportive of the idea, but they keep pointing back to the community board to, to say, what is their thoughts on it? And from where my point of view is that the community board should kind of just like back the community's feelings about things most of the time and maybe raise concerns and things like that um because because they are invested and in, and take the time to show up to these meetings but we do have 600 signatures many like here these ones that we got knocking door to door all the neighbors mm -hmm. all the businesses those are real signatures real people unlike the internet i know you can like sometimes just get people from all around the world to sign those internet ones mm -hmm. so we made sure to like face to face talk with people and um it is clear that the community sees that corner of the park as not being activated. It does not foster any sense of community there. People are more, especially the neighbors, are more just concerned about what they see there. People loitering, littering, and um, and so there is this swell of engagement from the community, and it's kind of just going nowhere. And I'm kind of at a loss for for what to do. And everybody keeps telling me get a formal resolution of support from parks and then it goes to the full board and then like these, these steps don't really even do anything. It just allows our community to go to the next step with with something to show for it. Okay, Lisa, can I say I know I know yeah. um, I know safest Wait, is Debbie, Debbie, was Debbie. against it. Debbie, I'm sorry, hold on, because Edith kind of jumped in first. So let's let Debbie, uh, let's let Edith speak and then you can jump in, Debbie. I don't want to cut anybody off, but I, I, I Matt, do you hear me? Yes, I do. All yes, right, my name is Edith Blitzer. I also sit on uh, the Community Board Parks, of course, but I'm mm -hmm. also chair of the Pelham Parkway Neighborhood Association, uh, which Debbie is part of. We have two dog runs, one for the large dogs and one for the small dogs. Right. The only advice I could give you is we did not go through the community board. We right. went, we went to, um, Jimmy Vacco, who is the councilman at that time and Richie Torres, who was a councilman at that time. And they helped fund us together with the parks. Of course, my of advice course it'll, you, it will be funding from, from the electeds for sure. Exactly. Parks, no money. That's the only way to go. I'm telling you from experience. However. I guess you being in your position, maybe have more clout to go to those officials. I just, as a regular community member need to do my due diligence and get these petitions and support from the community board, because I'm not recognized as a long upstanding member of the community. So I'm trying to do my part to show that this is something the community wants and the, po the politicians are not going to take my word for it. They okay, need to like listen. you to say, Hey, you know what? Our community is calling for this. Okay, go to see Mark Jonai, make an appointment. I did, I did. I know Farah. I know our and mayor on the patrol. I'm on the patrol in the community association. Is, Everybody is, says go to the community board and get a formal resolution of support. This is what Mark Jonai's office told you to do? Farah, yeah. All of them say the same. They say, you know what? This sounds like a great idea. And we just need to see that the community, what the community board thinks about it. Okay. Will you give me a chance to talk to Mark himself? And sure. you're, I, but why not just say that, uh, we support moving forward with this idea. Well, I intend telling him that besides a few other things. All right. Well, what about, what about here as well? You have the power as being a community board member here. My full support. Cause I think it's wonderful for the community. They make friends, they make neighbors, they sit and they chat. So yeah, you have I mean, I I don't have a problem with this. I mean, unless Edith, Debbie, um, and, and Janice, do you guys see any I, reason, procedural or otherwise, that we shouldn't I, just I, vote to give them a support letter? No, I do not. I do not agree to give a support letter because I'm, I was literally told just before I came on to the Zoom meeting from people from the uh, school across the street, St. Francis Xavier, they are against it. I even spoke with Al D'Angelo and he says it's not a good idea with it being across the street from a school. It was brought up once. It was told to pick another location other than Loretta Park. I mean, people are having different conversations then and because I speak with Al D'Angelo about this as well and he says they have no, no issue with it. 
So Matt, why don't you do I, this? Why I'm, don't you go I'm, to school? I'm, in a, I'm at a location right now with him. Okay. He just told me. Can, is he available to get involved in the meeting? He's he's in a meeting, uh, in a different in a different space. I'm on this meeting. Matt, why don't you do? Why don't we do this, Matt? Why don't you go? I know you said you spoke to the school. Why don't right. you see if the school will actually give you a, something in writing saying that they support this? They just don't want to. They just didn't want to get involved. They're just like we're not interested. That's what they told me because again, I'm just a regular member of the community. It's up to the board to really do this type right. of work that has the respect. Okay. But you of have to understand. Leaders. You have to understand where we're coming from. The 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 school is one of the main stakeholders in this because they're right across the street. So that's what I would have thought. It. We can't but support it was, unless they care. support it. I, I understand. That's why it was one of the first places I went and they said, we don't want to right. get involved. So there's not, I can't force their hand. I can't force their hand. So Al D'Angelo said, you know what? This is good what you're doing. People are getting engaged. That park, yes, is dead. The bocce never worked out. That was my initiative and those people never showed up. And so he called mm -hmm. the school. He he was kind of frustrated himself. As it seemed to me that the bocce the people never showed up. The school uses the playground as part of their schoolyard. I, I understand. You know what? I don't even, I'm not, I don't need the dog park for myself. I'm doing this because I saw the park is not being used in that corner. It's a shame. And for all the talk right. of the community that we say, we, I see all these people walking their dogs all over the neighborhood. They never meet each other. And as soon as they do, they start talking about dogs and then it leads into something else. And, and if we have the opportunity to bring that all together, why not? Why not move it to the next step? Eventually, Parks is going to shoot it down anyway. But at least we can like be doing something productive and working in to towards a vision of something better instead of just always complaining about this or that. I understand what you're saying. I think just having the school on board is important for us to be able to vote to feel confident in bringing that vote. If they're so opposed, uh, why don't they show up to the meeting and voice their opposition? That is true. I, that's not something I can answer. Because <laughs> I approach them and they say I'm not. They say we are not interested. Lisa, okay. we can invite yep. a spokesperson from the school to our next parks meeting. Sure, we can do that. Um, that's a good idea. So we'll in, we'll invite somebody from school from the school. Uh, was it Xavier, right? Saint Francis Xavier. Okay. And um, in the meantime, Edith, you said you'll talk to Jonai's office and kind of find out what's going on there. And then hopefully, Matt, we can get this resolved at our next meeting. In the meantime, Matt, also, can you send um, a copy of all of, like a hard copy of all those petitions to our office? If you want to, I don't know, what's the best way if you want to scan them? Or if you want to make copies and just drop them off in an envelope, whatever's kind of easiest for you so that we all have those uh, petitions. Mm -hmm. Sure. So could I just, before we wrap this up? Sure. Uh, I know that there has been an inquiry to this. I don't know Parks' official stance on this, but I will, I will find out. Um, I also have a direct ear to the borough commissioner. And personally, I don't have a problem with the from from as as a representative from parks i don't have a problem with the dog run there i do know what's there currently and i know when it was built and i know it was built as a request by the community board and i know it hasn't been used in probably 10 years and so that area of the park is it it's a it's a just a you know corner closet of the park that we have to pick up garbage to we have to constantly pick up leaves we have to get in there. The garbage is always in the in the uh, in the bocce ball court. So I I know what we do just to keep that area clean, and so um, activating it. And I love your choice of words as what's relevant in the industry. Activating that corner of the park for something that's relevant to the community is something that we want to engage in. Now, of course, we parks and my commissioner could also reach out to the school as well as myself to say from um, parks is now reaching out to you so that we could get at least get a statement. And they usually, usually when we reach out to, to the upper level, to the headmaster of the school, we get a response pretty quick. 
It's Lisa, just, I think that's a great idea. That's 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 fantastic. Yeah, if you could do that for us, Matt, that was that yeah, would be great. Absolutely, Matt. If because you when I would love when to get this we, issue resolved. Yeah, when yeah. we request, we usually, you know, as a city agency, we get these entities, these organizations that respond pretty quick. And I'm they know it's the person. If you do that for us. I I won't bother you as much. <laughs> it is. You know, I love it when you bother me. Okay. <laughs> because you can't you can't tell tell everybody do I not do I ignore you when you bother me? Never. Never. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> no. That's great. Well thank you. Thank you so much, Matt. Uh from part Lisa, of I will Matt. ask, I will ask that you could send me an email with, with yep. each one of these. And Matt C, if you mm -hmm. look in the chat, I have my information, my great. email address and my office number. You could send me emails best. Send me an email. If you could scan those uh, petitions too and attach them to the email, I'll I'll make this a agenda item when I meet with my, the borough commissioner. Oh, great! Thanks, Matt. No problem. All right, Lisa. There's a few more right. uh, people need that wanted that wish to speak. They said so in the chat. Great. Who's next? Roxanne is next, followed by Diane Finch and Judy Desire. Okay. All right, Roxanne. Yes. Are you able to hear me? Yes, yes I am. Okay. I just wanted to make sure because I have sometimes. I like to agree with Matt C. When we have people, whether it's a dog run or cleanups, when people are together, they engage and have discussion that they would never have if they were not in that um, situation. So. I do always um, support any project that uh, brings community together because it often leads to other solutions. And I can say as a founder of Friends of Palm Parkway that, that does weekly cleanup since four years, we have um, evolved not to only clean the parkway, we have evolved to address issues outside the parkway, quality of life issues, tenant issues, um, even um, drug clinic issues. And I think that's all came about because we started cleaning the parkway four years ago. So I agree with Mr. Matthew C that bringing the community together, whether it's for dogs or whatever it does bring, I'm sorry, there's a lot of static in the background. It uh, does bring the community together and have open discussion that can lead to more um, uh, fruitations. Uh, second, when we do our cleanups, we usually have like 20 to 25 volunteers and that's without even asking if I send emails out, or if I send texts, we can get actually 40 to 45 volunteers on a weekly basis. So we're a very active group when it comes to Palm Parkway and we have uh, ongoing issues, which I won't bring up here, but we're trying to deal with in a different venue, which hopefully we'll have addressed by the end of this week. But I just like to say that uh, every park should have a friends of park, uh, a friends of park group because it brings people together. It cares for the park. It resolves issues that may not have been addressed years ago because there's no active involvement. We've been very involved with barbecuings years and years and years, going to media, dealing with the captains of the PEP officers, uh, park central control, uh, actually speaking to people. If it's not a large gathering, we can actually approach people and, and ask them not to do so. NYPD does not deal with illegal barbecuing. They've been instructed. They do not cannot engage with illegal barbecuing. It's a uh, it's a pep uh, issue if it's on parks property, or it's a three one one issue if it's on uh, a sidewalk. So NYPD cannot address it. They, I, I had uh, discussions, meetings with them regarding that illegal barbecuing. Regarding signs, signs work because at least you give people notification that there's it's not a um, a place for barbecuing. And unfortunately, we don't have signs. I've been informed that we will get signs. I'm looking forward to those signs because we have, have not, no signs for over a year and a half. And when you don't have signs, then people do have a legitimate argument when they say, well, I didn't know you couldn't barbecue here because there's no sign stating otherwise. Anyhow, I thank you for your time and that's it. Thank you, Roxanne. Uh, next, you said is Diana Finch. Yeah, and Judy Desire from BPECA. Okay, so Diana first and then Judy. Hi everyone, um, I'm here from Bronx Parkies Community Association, BPECA, just to report in on the progress that we're finally seeing on the reconstruction of Waring Playground and the basketball court. 
Um, we had a great meeting with Michael Ortiz, who came out to show us the area that will be blocked off, fenced off for construction. Um, and I was able to have um, our new city council person, um, Oswald Feliz, join us. And that was great. Um, he's very supportive of parks and wants to do as much in favor of parks in his district as he can. Um, we're now working on a project to relocate the rose bushes that we planted next to the playground outside of the construction zone. Um, and in fact, we're planning to put them along the pathway that leads up to the botanical garden entrance that we were going to discuss tonight. Um, and I'm meeting with Deb Di Gregorio to go over our idea for where we're going to relocate those plants. Um, so things are finally going well for the relocation. And now that Michael showed us how the construction fencing is going to work, we're able to start telling people in the community who use the basketball court and use the playground and and also picnic in the area what's going to be happening and what it's going to look like. So they really appreciate getting that heads up. Um, and on Zimmerman Playground, because uh, that's part of our area too, um, my understanding is that because there's no functioning bathrooms in the playground, that really limits the kind of activities that can be held there and permitted there and authorized there. Um, and I think we should find out more if we can about the federal funding, how much it is going to be and if it's for a specific use or not, because that could really be key from the infrastructure funds. And then um, lastly, I wanted to introduce you all to um, Judy who, is working to try to set up a CSA for this summer as the first step to bringing eventually a farmer's market into the neighborhood. And she has been working on this for several years now through the parks department. Can I just say that is fabulous. I've always like complained about the fact that we don't really have farmer's markets. This is just me personally and um, like Manhattan has all kinds of great farmers markets and, you know, we have Hunts Point with all this produce and we have nothing. So I applaud those efforts and I look forward to hearing more about them. Well, Judy can tell you lots and lots and lots about. Diana, what could be? Um, I think that the drop off location for the CSA is going to be Bronx Park East and Brady. And I think the parks department identified that as the best spot. And the, oh, I think the idea is that that would eventually be the location for the farmer's market as well. I think that would be fantastic over there. You got a group of people all over the place and we really would love it. I'm with you, Lisa. Yeah. Would it, what area did you say what again? To, um, to Judy to tell, the, tell you all the details. Yes, Judy, go ahead. We got you already. <laughs> can you hear me? Yes, we can. Hi, I'm Judy Desiree. And um, I applied for a Partnership for Parks grant to bring a farmer's market into the Bronx on a weekend. <laughs> so um, that was a result of me doing bike rides to farmer's market, weekend farmer's market, and realized there was only two in the Bronx and there was a lot more weekday. And then I bike all the time to uh, Kensico Dam, passing through the park. And I was like, this would be a perfect place um, based on the traffic, the activity of the neighborhood. And um, I right now is starting with a CSA program first. Uh, the actual location, because there's a restroom near Lydell, not, I'm sorry, Leidig, um, yes. That's where we would like to have the uh, distribution area be. Uh, we are working with a local farmer's market that is located between here and Albany. So they're very close. 
um, they we would like to have like an event to kind of introduce and explain what a CSA is and how it works with the hopes of bringing a farmer's market and having that kind of culture next year. So um, the CSA would be like on Tuesdays, early morning, because that's easier for the farmer to pass through the Bronx. Um, you'll be surprised how many farmers pass through the Bronx. <laughs> I believe it. They go to Hunts Point. They, they take their stuff to Hunts Point. Yes. Can you, I'm sorry, Judy, can you just back up for people who might not know what a CSA is? Can oh. you just like a, a very brief primer on that? Okay, my apologies. Um, CSA stands for the abbreviation for Community Supported Agriculture. And what it is, is that you basically pay a farmer to grow your food. And many times it's on a weekly basis and it's in seasonal uh, veggies, herbs, and different types of, of fruits that are grown in New York City. Um, you join in as a member for a length of time, which is about, for this farmer, it's 22 weeks, so starting in June, all the way to November. And each week you receive about uh, six or seven or plus based on the farmer of ingredients. And this farmer uh, is $20 per week uh, for this year. <laughs> uh, it, uh, it basically gives you organic, fresh produce. The farmer is called Gonzalez Farm. They are approved by Just Foods and Grow NYC. They are already at a farmer's market at Riverdale, and they're looking to come, you know, more into the Bronx. They are also in Harlem, uh, in, in Manhattan, Harlem, and Inwood, I believe. And so the CSA will give you a lot, an opportunity to have basically a wholesale price of produce versus what gets marked up at a farmer's market. So it's just an introduction to bringing that produce into the community and hopefully grow into bringing more local farmers into uh, a setting like a, a local market. That's I hope that was helpful. <laughs> no, no, that's, that's great. Um, so is it definitely starting in June or you're still- Yes, um, definitely? We, have, we have a good amount of members, but we would like to have more. Um, many uh, CSAs, I'm like on a mission to get at least 50. <laughs> Many, um, we are currently also applying for SNAP and we're in the approval process. So you can pay for the CSA and SNAP with using SNAP funds, which is unique to um, a CSA, which is usually a one payment for a season. So this, um, we are allowing a payment plan. So you have the choice to do one payment bi-weekly payments of $40 or bi-weekly payment using SNAP. And that will, you know, basically cover you for the season. Um, I am an individual. I am scrambling to finish uh, produce that I purchased from Sunday. <laughs> so <laughs> it's a good amount per, um, per week. And uh, we do have a website that has information about it. Um, you can see who the farmer is, where he's located. He has 20 um, acres uh, to grow on uh, he's right here, upstate in New York. So, can you um, can you tell us the website and also put it in the chat? Yes, it's called BronxParkCSA.com. Um, I'm going to put it in the Sorry, chat. You probably can't see this, right? I don't think you, I don't yeah, think you can really see this it. too well, but... <laughs> These are the cards Judy made to hand out. Lovely. So Judy, what I would recommend if you want to help, um, you know, try to spread the word about this, mm -hmm. you should reach out to Jeremy, our district manager and get registered for the gallery session at our board meeting. Cause then that will um, bring you to a wider audience. Um, but the, for the gallery session, I believe it's limited to two minutes. Is that, is that right? Um, yes. Either, yeah, it's two minutes. So you have to condense. I mean, we don't really limit people too much here, um, but at the board meeting, because there's just so much business to get through, I bet. Um, the gallery session is limited to two minutes and they're very strict about it. So try to, you know, work on getting all that great information into two minutes. Okay. Um, and definitely with the primer on CSAs, because I, a lot of people probably are not familiar with them. Yeah. Um, and, you know, just kind of hit on all the, the main points, the money, the the, the time frame, you know, everything you just said, just try to 
condense it as much as you can. Okay. Uh, but I think it's great. I think um, I'm excited for it. And so we can just go ahead right now and register at Bronx yeah. CSA. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Well, you got one more. I'm registering. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Um, you can also extend the time that you get to talk at the meeting if a board member asks you a question. So maybe a friendly board member will ask you one question so you could just say a little bit more. Uh, <laughs> and then you're also planning an event to bring the farmer into the neighborhood um, so that people can sample. Yes. And, buy and sample. Um, and we might need Matt's help with that. That's right. We're looking at least for like May 23rd, uh, a few days before the first start of the CSA, which would be on Tuesday, June 1st. So we're having an event where you can actually like purchase your first produce um, that the farmer currently has, and you will begin right that same week on your next produce. So, yeah. Judy, may I make a suggestion? Sure. I would like you to send somebody some more information lisa i'd like to put it on the pelham parkway neighborhood association website a lot of people get on there and read it so that would be one way of advertising how do i join that group you don't have to join it email oh. whatever you have i'll give you my email okay it's mama blitz oh can you type that in are you able to type it into the chat Is no a i'm not that oh. Okay. <laughs> Lisa, it's it's Mama Blitz. I'll do it. I'll do it. Hold on. Mama Let's Blitz. Zero. I'll do it for you, Judy. Okay. <laughs> Diane, even you could do it. It's Mama Blitz 0822 at yahoo.com. Oh, another Yahoo. And then we could post it on our website. Okay. Thank you, Mama Blitz. <laughs> it's made me that. <laughs> well, that's exciting. I'm very excited. Thank you for doing that for the community. Um, You're welcome. All right. So um, that closes our gallery session. I have. This is Matt from Parks. I have a question. A couple questions for Judy. Sure, Judy, go I got your email today. You sent me the email. Yeah. Did you? Judy, can you hear me? That? Yes, I can. Can you make sure you have your uh your contact properly written there because is it on park or is it supposed to be bronx park is bronx because, park east because it's it's incorrectly written in the chat so can you please uh make sure you have your your information oh, my apologies sorry <laughs> okay all right matt sorry go ahead so you applied for that permit today and you were sending me your, what you got, is that yes. your email? Yes, that's correct. Okay, because I hadn't seen it yet get kicked to me from okay. my uh, permits department. So I will anticipate it. I love the idea. I love farmer's markets. Yeah. Um, so, so I'm on board. I do have a question. It's just going to be asked of me before the permit gets issued. Mm -hmm. Where exactly are you planning to do this? How many tables are you going to set up? Are you going to be on the curb, on the sidewalk, inside the park? So let me just, we'll just stay. hash this out now. So that way, as soon as this comes across my desk, I'll be able to uh, prove it and get it, get it back to you. Um, so because of COVID, <laughs> the farmer is pre-packaging produce, so we only need one table. Um, most CSAs, people are able to uh, pick their produce, but now it all gets pre-packaged, so you're handed a box with the items already inside. Uh, therefore, we'll have just one table and one tent. It is um, near the playground, um, so Latin gig, where there's like a beach area. We were hoping to be in that spot for distribution. And Judy, for the event where the farmer just comes to give people samples? Yeah, so they, uh, they have the option of having a sample or um, having all of the items in a bag, and they just pay once and go. 
So you can either sample what um, a, 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 the spinach tastes, the kale, lemon, um, potatoes, beets, uh, scallions, red onions. Like, we'll have a, a scoop of that. So you can either taste it or get a bag to go with all the produce inside. Okay, great. So that his truck will come down. He's going to be parked right on the edge of the park. Uh, he's going to drop off. He won't stay. Okay. So um, he'll park, get all the produce, at least 20 or 25 boxes. Um, and then uh, ideally, it's good to have it done before one because um, we don't have refrigeration. Um, it may be a hot day, so we don't want the produce to go bad. But, but for this one day event, the sampling and meeting a farmer. Yes. Um, that will also be boxes he'll drop off? Yes, or he'll yes, that's correct. So no one will be touching produce. So when you when you sign up for the program, you don't get to kind of select which produ produce you want. It's just kind of a predetermined group of produce for the week? Um, um, there is an ideal uh, produce that do come, but are you talking about the shape and sizes of the produce or just the actual produce? No, the actual produce, like, is it like, are you always, do you get to pick like, okay, I want lettuce, I want tomatoes, oh, I want no. you get cabbage, a, whatever. You get a gamut of what it comes in. And um, so there's a standard um, produce that comes and then there's a seasonal produce that gets attached to it. Oh, okay. So um, it's whatever the, you know, like God, like hopefully there's no bad season or bad weather issue that makes a produce not happen. But if it doesn't, he's connected with other farmers who would replace that produce. And you'll be told like a week before each delivery what's coming into your package. Great. And uh, he right. also adds eggs as an add-on. So you can add oh. eggs. So it's a dozen eggs for $5. You have the choice of adding it to your, um, your share or not. That's great. That's great. Um, okay, um, just realizing what time it is, and we try to keep these meetings to an hour. It doesn't always work, but we do try. Um, no, I appreciate it. This was a lot of a lot of good information, so thank you. Um, so I'm going to close the gallery session. Before I move on to new business, I realized I skipped over uh, the schedule for minute takers. <laughs> we didn't get to sign anybody for tonight, but that's fine. I'll do the minutes for tonight. Um, I just want to kind of set up a schedule for the remainder, you know, for our meetings going forward, um, starting with next month, just so that we don't, we always just have it um, and we'll just rotate it from there. So um, committee members who would like to do the minutes for next month. Don't all raise your hand at once. I know you're very excited for this. <laughs> We, we did all vote that, you know, we were going to do a rotating schedule. So it's got, it's got to start somewhere. But Lisa, it's only one more meeting in June. We don't meet July and August. Right. Well, we can just continue it into, into September. And I'll, I'll remind us. And I commit, if I don't have a doctor's appointment, I will do it. But I never know when these doctor's appointments pop up and they were always at night. Okay. Fair enough. Well, if that happens, you know, we can talk about it and we'll just move things. Okay. Around. I say it's very hard to commit for me. Okay. That that's perfectly fair. But I think like, I think, and unless you guys can think of a different way, I think we should just kind of set up a schedule. And if it so happens, cause that can happen to anybody, right? You might have a doctor's appointment. Somebody might have something that comes up. Then right. we can just move on to the next person in the line. And then when you're next available, you would do it. Does that sound fair? Fair enough. I'm happy to, you know, I'll manage the schedule. I know it sounds a little complicated, but I, I will manage it. <laughs> um, but I do need someone to volunteer for the next one. It's hard to commit right now. So it's hard to say. We'll, we'll get to that bridge when we, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Yeah. Okay. But we did agree that we were, so we do, so is that what you guys want to do? You want to just decide at every meeting who's going to do it? 
I think you're better off because we never know what other meetings are coming up, Lisa. Okay. Then that's fine. So then we'll do that. So then at the top of the meeting, that'll be the first item on the agenda. Who's taking the I think minutes. that would be fair. Okay. Sounds good. Um, all right. So old business. I think we took care old business. Old business. Yeah, we took care of a lot of old business. Yeah. Any, there any other that. old business? <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Is there any new business? No. Nope. Hearing, hearing none. Um, just need to then I will close the meeting. Meeting is adjourned at 8 18 p.m. Thank you everybody for, for attending. Hey Lisa, you're doing a great job. I don't know what you're nervous about. <laughs> and, thanks you everyone and, and thanks, Matt. Backing you, so you're not alone. My Thank pleasure. you. I appreciate your support. Yeah, great job. Thanks. Good night. Good night. Thank yeah. you. Bye bye. Good night. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.